Hello everybody, this is Troy Dykmeyer, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northeast Iowa, and we just finished up doing our customer winter agronomy updates. And I had some requests from some folks to say, hey, could you put together a few videos on some of the more important topics that you guys covered this past season? So here's a couple, hopefully a couple videos to inform you on what we talked about if you weren't able to make it to one of our meetings. The first one that we're gonna be doing here today is what we call our 300 bushel customer survey. And this past growing season, we actually had the opportunity here in Iowa to weigh a bunch of 300 plus bushel corn on our customers' farms. And as you can see the map here showing that there was over 1200 locations in Iowa where, where Pioneer sales reps went out to customers' farms and weighed over 300 bushel corn. And every one of those dots there represents a 300 bushel weigh. There was over 570 different farm operations that achieved this great milestone. And there was 64 different Pioneer products used. And I, one of the things I find interesting on that map there is you can definitely see that north central, northwest Iowa area where essentially the very heavy early rains took its toll and very much limited the top end yield potential of the crop. So the next slide here just kind of shows the top 45 of those 64 products that were used in 2024 to reach these 300 bushel ways. And you can see just about every hybrid that we sell had a location that went 300 bushels. However, there are ones that definitely stick out. Some of those are our more high volume, more frequently planted products. So you expect that they would have more, but there's definitely hybrids as we know, just have a top end gear that others don't and it does kind of show. Now I'm gonna zoom more into Northeast Iowa and the area that you see there highlighted in black are the counties that, that I cover. But overall in Northeast Iowa, we had about 116 different locations that went 300 bushels and 22 different Pioneer products ranging from 99 day through 117 CRM. And again, just like the all Iowa data, there are a few hybrids and some genetic platforms with the different trait combinations that really stuck out as top performers. Now, one of the things that we did with these 300 bushel ways, and we asked the customers, what were some of the general management practices that you did to achieve these these high yields. And what was interesting is the information that we got back and some of the high level stuff we'll share with you here. At first, the crop rotation, you can see that about two thirds of them were on corn on soybean acres and about a third on corn on corn. And you know, that kind of is very similar to maybe our rotation pattern here in Northeast Iowa. On the Eastern side, we have a little bit more corn on corn. Um, but we all know that getting high yields consistently with corn on corn is more of a challenge. And most specifically from the residue management standpoint, having residue in that seed furrow and trying to achieve that uniform emergence, you know, all of our plants coming up within a day or two of each other is probably where the main difference comes between the corn on soybean and corn on corn. Now with tillage practices, you can see that about three fourths of the area had, or three fourths of the ways I should say, you know, had fairly aggressive full width tillage done. So one could look at that and say, well, you need to do tillage most likely to get these high yields. But what's interesting is, you know, about 25% or about one quarter of the way checks were done with either no till or very reduced tillage. And when I started thinking about this, it made sense that, you know, really about three fourths of the corn production here in Northeast Iowa is tilled and, you know, probably 25% or maybe less than that has some sort of very high conservation level. So I guess to me, it kind of showed, uh, didn't matter the tillage practice, you could pretty much, you know, achieve high yields with either one, because like I said, the amount of very low tillage um, done is a very low percentage, but yet I think it actually uh, performed just as well or maybe even better. Now, one of the interesting things that came about this survey was the planting date information. And just by quick glancing at this chart, you probably think, well, holy cow, it looks like you have to get your corn in early to achieve the yields. But when we go back and think about 
the planting season in 2024, we know that there were some significant challenges. And really what this chart is showing us is plant when it is fit. If you remember our very first week of planting, say that April 10th through maybe the 15th and then kind of through about April 20th, were most likely our best planting conditions the entire season. And then the next two weeks while planting kind of resumed hit and miss, we all knew that we weren't putting that seed in a very good uh, conditions. You know, things were tacky when we did tillage, when we planted. And then as we got toward the 10th through the 15th and even the 20th of May, we finally got back into some good planting conditions. So the key lesson, the key learning from this chart right here is just the fact that, you know, whether it's early or whether it's later in May, the key to high yields in corn is planting when conditions are fit. We can still achieve 300 plus, 300 plus bushel corn later on in the planting season, but the key is making sure things are fit. Now, oftentimes I get growers say, Troy, I'm gonna to try to increase my corn yields. And I said, well, what's your plan? And they say, I'm gonna plant more seeds and put on more nitrogen. And for those of you that have been following my customer update or going to our meetings, you know, over the past, you know, five to eight years, we've actually been telling you to probably pull back on your seeding rates. And this chart here does an excellent job of showing what we call the kernel flex in our pioneer genetics. The majority of these 300 bushel ways came between a 30 and 34,000 drop rate with the planter and a few of them maybe up to 36,000. But as you know, a lot of our products really don't need to be dropped more than 34,000 from the planter. And we're finding with the Pioneer Kernel Flex, we can get anywhere from 10 to 12 uh, bushels per 1,000 dropped if we have a balanced fertility program and we have good soil biology going on. So it doesn't take super high seeding rates with your Pioneer Genetics to achieve these, these great yields. One of the things that definitely stuck out and we've been seeing this the past few years in our plot data, is the fuller the season, the maturity, the, the higher the yield potential. And you can just see as we go from 105, 108, 110, 113 day CRMs, you know, as we got a fuller season, we had a better chance of achieve, achieving these high yields. Now everybody can't plant all of their corn hybrids, all their acres to full season corn, but what this does tell us is to max out the maturity as much as your operational logistics will allow. And a lot of times, you know, we can pick up two to maybe four bushels for every CRM that we increase. Now, speaking of nitrogen, you can see what the primary nitrogen source was in many of these locations. And it comes to no surprise that with the very wet growing season that we had, that anhydrous really stuck out as the preferred form of nitrogen last year. We do know that anhydrous is the most stable form of nitrogen that we can apply. Uh, stays in ammonium longer than any other form. And so that one really stuck out. The UAN came in next and a lot of those applications were split applications. I don't think when we looked at the data, there was hardly any all upfront UAN products that hit our 300 bushel mark. Now, traditionally here in Northeast Iowa, I would say manure would give us a higher percentage of these 300 bushel ways. But again, with the very wet growing season that we had, the manure just didn't quite have the staying power, especially the fall applications that they typically do. And again, it was a record wet spring for us here in Northeast Iowa. So typically I would I would think that that manure, hopefully this next year when we do the same program, the manure likely, those numbers will, will be higher. So then people often ask, well, how much nitrogen are folks applying? And you can see the vast majority were in that 200 to 240 units of nitrogen uh, applied. And again, going back to what I said about the seeding rates, we know if we have our balanced nutrition, pH, P and K, and sulfur where we need it, that we can be extremely efficient with our nitrogen. And in most of these cases, we're looking at, you know, maybe a 0.65 to 0.75, 0.8 units of nitrogen per bushel. 
So just piling on more nitrogen didn't necessarily mean that we were gonna get any more bushels. It's the balanced nutrition, soil biology, that's really allowing us to capture the high end part of these genetics. So speaking of sulfur, as you can see, about 95% of the 300 bushel ways are at least in the 90s, high 90s, we're using some form of sulfur. And you can definitely see a trend there once we start getting above 15 units of sulfur per acre. And then as we kind of start working our way up even toward 30 units of sulfur per acre, the percentage of 300 bushel ways kept increasing. So that's the one thing we've been finding over the years is in the past, we would have probably only recommended maybe 15 to 20 units of sulfur. And now that recommendation is kind of up to 25 to 30 and it kind of showed up very well for those people getting the maximum performance when they up their sulfur rate. And at Pioneer, we've kind of noticed over the years as well that your nitrogen to sulfur ratio is about a 10 to one. So again, for taking, looking at the survey, if, if we put on 230 pounds of nitrogen, that 10 to one ratio would give us 23 pounds of sulfur. All right, a lot of times people ask, what about micronutrients? You know, do I need to be applying them? And again, we wanna promote balanced nutrition. And we know that, you know, continuous crop removal will eventually pull down our micronutrients. However, many of our very rich soils here in Iowa have a lot already in them. And you can see really only about half of the 300 bushel ways had micronutrients used. And the most common were boron and zinc. And this kind of actually matches up nicely with the yield pyramid data that Pioneer did with tissue sampling whole plant analysis. Typically boron, zinc, and then manganese are the three micronutrient deficiencies that we often see. All right, last but not least in our survey, we asked about did you use a foliar fungicide or not? And you can see the majority of people did use a fungicide. And once again, you know, We've always been saying that it seems like the tassel time to silking stage is the best time to apply a fungicide. And sure enough, you can see here that that's what most people did. Um, interestingly, we get often asked, you know, do two pass applications pay? And you can see there wasn't too many two pass systems used. And we do feel with, again, if you have balanced fertility, good soil biology and pioneer genetics, that in most seasons, you know, one fungicide application at the proper time is gonna help maximize yield. So that's just a real quick synopsis of our 300 bushel way grower survey. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, be sure to contact your local Pioneer sales representative. Thank you. That concludes this Pioneer agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.